Hello to all my Lulu Art followers. I'm Teresa Mize and I have a watercolouring little demo for you. Watercolour roses using the Prima Marketing Tropical set. Now I bought myself a new set of paints, the Tropicals, and I started painting roses with them and I loved it and I started painting more roses with them and then I thought why not show you how I did them. But first let's start with the watercolour palette. This is the Prima palette and this is how they set out their colours. I put them in their order and swatched them out but I did not like that arrangement so I took them out and rearranged them into this order and swatched them out to see how I'd like them. Decided I didn't like them in that order either so I made a new order and this is the one I like. That way I have all my uh, yellows and to blues and greens together. I have my pinks to purples together. I have my reds and yellows together and I have my purples to greens together. And I'm also going to be using the Gansai Tambi Starry Colours in this project. So let's start painting. I have myself a piece of uh, watercolour paper. I have myself, I'm going to be using two brushes, the Aquash brush um, for, to squeeze out water as I go and a flat brush, this uh, Ranger one does quite nicely. And of course my two watercolour palettes here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just wet up some of these across there. Need that. I kind of make it up as I go along the colours. I'm just going to wet up possibly one, two and three. Just wet those up. They can start activating while I'm making. So just with a very wet brush here and broad thing, just uh, with the broad one. I use the broad one because it makes it fills up an area quite quickly and get a bit of a puddle on my paper that'll stay wet for a while there is water in my barrel but I still dip it in there and I'm going to start with some pinky colors I don't I'll put them out there and then I'm going to just dip them into my puddle and just go around in swirls and they'll spread out in that and make another circle and do it again maybe I might make this color more intense just add a bit more less water more color less water and then spread that one out this is for my base layer of my roses and try and get a bit of a more um, a deeper colour towards the middle. That's nice. That'll do. And these can uh, you can make in a variety of sizes. And let's make an, a big one, a bigger one. It doesn't matter if there's some white patches there. Um, it'll all add in and blend in eventually let's oh, just mix up some colors that's why I like to have all these together I can just dip 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 the end of my brush in quickly and that gives me a, a new shade of color and maybe a little bit more of that deeper purple let's see what happens there bit more right there It's a great way to just play with your colours and see how they go. I just want to clean the end of that brush off. That's why I dip it in the water. Easier than squeezing out the barrel. Um, and I like to get a little bit of yellow in here somewhere as well. Ooh, that's a lot of yellow. That's alright. That'll work. None of these will ever look the same as the other. And... They're all pretty experimental as I go along. Just another little one there. Oh, what can we do? We could probably go more for a yellow and an orange one this time, eh? Might 
might put that one with the brown centre. Maybe some brown. I'll do something, a, a deeper colour in the middle and then maybe a deeper colour outside. But that's what's happening and that's sort of dispersing and blending out as we're talking. So while that's drying off, I'll move on to my leaves. I'm going to flip that one. Probably sideways will be enough. Um, dip, dip, dip into the greens. My leaves are very simple. Dip, dip, dip into the greens. And just... Just a nice little ellipse shape like that. And then I might dip into the blue to make that more of a different green. And it's just blending some colours onto the brush. I see I like that one. Yeah, that's more blue. And while I've got this deeper blue on, I might actually come back in here and just do some leaf marks on top of that one nothing precise just get the, the idea no one's going to be looking too closely at these but it, you know, it's just uh, the a look that we're oh geez that, actually that I do, and while, see, while I'm doing this, I'm just loving the way these colours layer. That yellow I put straight on top, I'm going to tip that paper up to help that whatever's puddling at the ends to come back down. I'm, I'm no great watercolourist, so I'm just really a dabbler. The only thing that makes me a watercolourist is that I've got a watercolour pan, I have a brush, and I'm daring to... Um, get it down onto paper so it's just fun this is fun stuff oh what color could i do next I find the greens are very similar in look but when you start mixing them with other colors there there is a difference i notice that they're more different as in the mixy i wouldn't know how to watercolor but do not know how to get that but you know that'll be that'll still work. And it really is as simple as that. And um every every leaf is gonna look beautiful and different. Try not to get too much yellow in the base layer of the leaf because it kind of looks like a nitrogen deficiency then, doesn't it? Oh, that's probably not dry enough yet. Oh, look how beautiful these different colours. This is the fun stuff about working with these things, is that you... New, new colours, new layers. Learn about um, how wet your brush is going to be to get different effects. How dry you need to let things go to get a different look. But sometimes when you do this, it lifts the colour off. These are things you'll learn um, as you're experimenting along. So that'll be enough leaves. So you get the general idea of how I'd make a leaf. Now I'm going to stop. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to show you how I get my rose petals. Okay, so here I am in for a closer look and hopefully I can uh, do a good job of a close-up. So I have my little watercolour patch here. And I have these ones, so I just want to mix a bit of the shimmer into here. There's actually already some mixed up here, but I'll show you what I did. Oh, there's still some yellow on there. So let's go over here, put it in here. Bit of a pewtery, silvery colour. And I'll put that into the orange that I had mixed up earlier, so I'll mix up some more. And I'll try and make a... Let's see what happens, really. <laughs> Everyone turns out a little bit different. I'm going to try it on this one. So this is uh, my, uh, what are we going to call it, my process. I generally have the same process. So I start in the middle and I do a couple of swirls in an uh, anti-clockwise direction. Then I start working outwards. It doesn't matter. That's just my process. But 
um, let's see how we go. So an open swirl and then about after about two swirls I'll come back and then I'll push out to the side and then come back. So it's like a little, like a comet orbit I guess. Heading in that direction, pick up some more paint and then I'll start up the side thinly and then press out. If I feel like I need to, I'll actually squeeze the barrel of the pen as well, of the water brush, to uh, dilute out the edges. And then go around and I'll just leave a very slim gap between one petal and the next. And I just keep working around in that fashion. Sometimes I might start by touching onto the next leaf, petal I mean, and then come around. And this one I'm going to, I'm already aiming to go from there to there with this one and go out really as wide as I can. So there and then squeeze right down, flatten that brush right out and then come back in. What happens is you get more concentrated colour in the middle there and it's thinner out there. And just keep going around like that. Some are just small. Some are more larger. There's a fair bit of shimmer in this one. I want to capture that edge. I might even scrub that edge a little bit to help lessen it. But look, it'll all look fine in the end. So there's a nice big wide bit. Come in there. And then squeeze that out. Come around. And start off thin, squeeze out, and I even overlap that onto that one. And that is basically my process for making these roses. So if I was to do another one, I might get, well there's yellow on here, I'm not worried about contaminating and mixing, so I'm going to mix it with this puddle over here that had the red in it and the oh let's get this color oh well, there's a fair bit of shimmer on there you can see that I've got lots more roses to make that'll all clean up as I go along let's see how I go oh squeeze out through the barrel as you're going let's see how that goes and I will do that one on Oh, which one? A bigger one, this bigger one. So same thing, anti-clockwise a couple of times and then starts pushing out. I want that colour to be more stronger. I want the colour to be more stronger as I said, so I'm going to squeeze this in and just darken that up. And push out. That one I joined back up to that one because it just felt good. <laughs> just a little half one maybe there. They don't all have to be uniform in size. There we go. Join that one back up into there. Uh, start out there. This one will be just a little shorty one through here. Because it just feels right. After doing a few of these, you get an idea about where you want to vary the petals. Bridge that one all the way over. Oh. Now I'm going to, I'm getting towards the edge of my flower. I'm going to decide to just, just intensify that colour a bit. 
and see what happens. Maybe I might go too far. <laughs> Who knows? I'll never, you'll never know till you give it a go. And it, it's a pretty forgiving sort of a, a medium, actually. Oh, let's uh, make that even a bit more intense. I'm going to... that I just dropped in that little bit of purple, which I know is very strong. And have I ruined it? <laughs> we'll work with that. Oh, I like that. Fun mixing up new colours, too. I like... Um, this is a fun medium to play with. Oh, I kind of like that... Uh, deeper colour around there and in fact what I'm going to do is bring that deeper colour back into the middle here where it was wet and let's see if that makes a difference that's all it does so that's what that one looks like all wet this one over here is nearly dry and you can see it's a little bit shiny. So that's what I'll do. I'll continue doing the rest. And I don't know if you can see a bit of that shimmer and shine that's happening there. This adds another bit of special interest to the flowers. So my next part that I'm going to do is to cut these out. You want to dip it in or cut one off. So there I'd have that. And then I would, this one's a pink one, so I'm going to just use pink here. I'm just using the archival ink because it just is permanent. I don't have to worry about things running again. So just a, a quick swipe around the edge there. And then on the same with the leaves, just to take that right edge off. Now, what I would do now, I can cut all the rest out later. I, I like to seal these, and because I don't, um, I'm finished with using, um, with wetting them and if, if any more water gets onto that it's going to um, reactivate um, and I don't want so I use I have this Dorland's wax uh, you can also there's a Tim Holtz uh, type of wax uh, sealer as well what I don't want to be doing is using a, uh, a water-based sealer because that's just only going to muck things up I definitely want a, um, a waxy thing like this so I'll just get a little dip in there, nothing much, and just quickly rub around. Now, this is going to be well and truly sealed, <laughs> and I can give a, a quick demo. So wax on, wax off. With the leaves, I'm only going to do the ends, because this is uh, resistant to water now. That means if I'm going to use a water-based glue, which I will, it won't work. So just be mindful of that. If you're going to be gluing, I don't know what glue you would use. I don't, I just use water-based glue. I'm going to get this deep purple here. And you can see that that has left a mark. <laughs> no, it actually hasn't. <laughs> it, it did wipe off. So that's what happens there. And same, I can do the same here. And it just wipes off. So it's pretty quick. A little bit of wax on, a little bit of wax off. Get myself some water-based glue. I just use this quickie glue that I have. Use your favourite glue. 
decide where you want your leaf to go. I'm going to go there and whoops. Oh, I think those two there look nice. A bit of glue on the bottom there. Bit of glue there. And then I just wriggle this into while I'm wriggling that I'm getting glue on the edges as well and then hold and then get the next one in wriggle that around and hold and I'm done now I'm going to say with the putting this this wax on it does um, lessen some of the shimmer but I like it like that it's not too it just sort of brings it down a bit but that's still there to add a little bit of interest I'm not even sure if you can see that but it's definitely there so what am I going to do with all these beautiful beautiful roses that I'm making Firstly I added some roses to some tags that I had made and then I decided to add some roses to some cards that I wanted to make for my card stash and then I decided I wanted to make a paper pennant to hang out in the garden. So why don't you get your watercolour roses happening and see what you can come up with. 